Hello my friends and welcome back to the rabbit hole and welcome to another episode of what's new in skincare for June of 2022. Oh uh, y'all, as is always the case with this series, we have a lot to cover. We are going to suffer through talking about these latest celebrity brands, including Kim Kardashian's new skincare brand. Ugh. We're going to cover how on earth a company can release a product that is called something it is clearly not. Don't worry, we do have some good news. We have some really exciting affordable releases. And in case you missed it, this series is now so massive that I've kind of split it up. I have a video of just trying on four more releases from this month, and they're actually all good releases. Yeah, I mean, honestly, what I have in this video is overwhelmingly good releases. We just have to chat about a few that I'm, you know, not so excited about. You all probably know the drill by now. In case you don't, I have timestamps and links by different categories in this video. We will have a drugstore, Korean, and high-end section in today's video, plus a bonus section covering our, uh, our celebrity skincare releases. We could just call that the drama section and it wouldn't be wrong. And as disclosure, everything in this video was gifted to me for consideration. Doesn't mean I love every single product in this video, but just so you know. And for today's video, let's get the celebrity drama out of the... Yeah, celebrity drama is correct. Celebrity skincare brands, let's get them over with. Let's talk about Kim Kardashian's skincare brand. And I'm gonna tell you something. I am only gonna talk about this brand one time and then never again. And by the end of this conversation, you will understand why I'm saying that. How about we go ahead and take a look at the website together. Oh wow, look at that. Complimentary US shipping with orders over $100. Well, that is just so thoughtful, isn't it? We'll ignore that other companies do their free shipping at 30 to 50. All right, anyway, what do we have for pricing here? So apparently she's selling her skincare as a ritual instead of skincare products. Cleanser for 43, toner 45, an exfoliator for 55, face cream 85. Her prices are really uh, definitely in the mid to high range of pricing. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the ingredients in the exfoliator first here. I know some people had some uh, concerns over sodium bicarbonate being so high in the formula. It does probably mean that this is a pretty high pH product, which is typically not what I would recommend for a skincare routine, and you can pay $55 for that baking soda. Oh my goodness, a hyaluronic acid serum for $90. Not that I'm too surprised. I mean, Barbara Sturm certainly has high prices, but let's see if we see any innovation here, anything that's that different. Rosa Centifolia Flower Water Aloe Glycerin. What is what is so innovative here? Genuinely, what is so innovative here? It just looks like added ingredients that aren't necessarily really contributing much at all. Honestly, the products themselves seem like another run-of-the-mill kind of high prices for basic skincare products. Sorry to say it, Kim, but that's still not the reason why I said I want to talk about this brand once and never again. So let's talk about some of the drama surrounding this release. First of all, if you follow me on Instagram, you already know about how alongside the release of this brand itself, there were articles circulating about Kim Kardashian talking about her brand in which she said that. Kim Kardashian said that if it would help her with preventing aging, she would eat poop. You might have a lot of internalized ageism if... So the whole reason I made an Instagram post about this is because I got upset about it. I don't think I'm the only one given the comments on it. I think a lot of us were going, that is gross for multiple reasons. Absolutely repulsive, right? Everybody thought that was repulsive. However, I did see some people saying, well, you know what? With this release, it actually does sound really refreshing that she's made her skincare system a refillable system. You know, we talk all the time about how we absolutely have to figure out how to address our massive problem of waste on this planet. Could it actually be Kim Kardashian who has some kind of positive influence here? And then, I'm really taking you back through how all of the drama unfolded, and then we saw the following post on Instagram of how this system actually works. And 
any hope of a bit of positivity in Kim Kardashian's skincare release just kind of went out the window with this. It went out the window because I hope you see what's going on with her refill system. Basically what it is, I've got a visual aid here because I'm not buying her products. Somehow I feel like this Neutrogena cleanser actually does kind of look like her products, doesn't it? Doesn't it look like them? So when you buy the refill, this is what you get. This is the refill that you then put into a larger product. And for a while, when I first saw this post, I really just sat there kind of stunned, right? I was so stunned. I was thinking, so you're actually claiming to have a refillable system where you're supposed to produce less waste, but if you really think about it, all it is is actually more waste. It's actually more because now there's an excess of this outside packaging that is totally unnecessary because you're buying the full-size product in its own packaging every time. Oh my god. I remember this day so well because I was just so shocked by it. Please tell me if any of you relate or not. Anyway, I was so shocked that I, I picked up my phone, I went downstairs where my partner was. You all have probably heard me talk about Ara, and unless you're new here, my sweetie Ara. Let me tell you something about Ara's personality before I tell you what happened next. So Ara is a remarkably stable in uh, emotions way. She's, she's kind of my rock. She never gets too upset. She's always able to just kind of, uh, you know, stay much more level, whereas I'm a little bit more of a sine wave. I can get, you know, my highs and my lows. So I took this same picture on my phone, went downstairs, and I said, Ara, you simply have to see the newest generation of refillable skincare, better for the earth, by Kim Kardashian. Stuck my phone in front of her face. Now again, Ara is not one to either be excited or to be frustrated, right? Very level. However, she sat there, and I see her. Just looking at it, just... just just looking at this. And at this point I go into the kitchen, I'm like, I'm a, I gotta get myself a snack after all this, you know? So I go into the kitchen and I come back out, she's still sitting there, and I'm going, did you, did, did you see, did you see what it is? And all of a sudden my incredibly stable sweetheart goes, what on earth is this? Does she want to destroy the earth more? I never see her get mad. I never see her get mad. Kim Kardashian broke my sweetheart, broke her. But something really great came from this. I actually had a real revelation, a realization, if you will, of what is actually going on with Kim Kardashian's brand. A lot of people were out here commenting, Kim Kardashian thinks we're stupid. She thinks we're actually going to believe that this is better for the planet. No, she doesn't. No, she doesn't. She knows that most of us in the skincare community are going to call her out on her BS. And guess what? I believe she thrives on it. I believe she has taken a page out of Gwyneth Paltrow's book and is intentionally doing this drama. Yeah, think about it. What do all of these skincare brands that are actually trying to do something positive for the planet, to create good skincare products, what do they have to do to put their names, just their names, in front of you? You know, as a start, they have to pay for a lot of advertising. Kim Kardashian gets around that just by having, you know, a rather well-established name. But at the same time, if she wants to get her skincare brand in as many faces as possible, Think about how much more effective it is to get all of us riled up so that we have to call our friends and tell them just how stupid this entire logic of a refillable system is. Think about how it gets us mad enough that we actually give her free advertising. See, I said Gwyneth Paltrow because she knows this. Why on earth do all of us in the skincare world even know about Goop? Because of all the drama. And Gwyneth Paltrow has actually said all of that negative feedback about her brand has helped her to sell more products. Some of you might be thinking, okay, but if it's saying bad things about the brand, that's probably going to convince people not to buy it. I don't believe that, and I'll tell you why. I think it kind of works like the game of telephone, and if you played that as kids. So we tell our friends how bad this brand is. They tell other people who tell other people, and somewhere down the line, it kind of translates into just the message that Kim Kardashian has skincare. 
And down the line, that could mean for somebody who is thinking, oh, I want to start a skincare routine, where do I start? Oh yeah, I heard about Kim Kardashian's brand. That's my reasoning for deciding I don't want to talk anymore about that brand. We do have one other celebrity skincare brand to talk about, and that's Road Skin by Hailey Bieber. Again, I don't want to spend a ton of time on celebrity skincare brands as a whole. In fact, let me tell you something. This is a series where I talk all the time about new and exciting skincare brands and skincare releases, but you know what doesn't get included in this series, at least not too often? The brands that have had to close their doors. Because the reality is it actually does, or at least will, even out. We can't keep having all these skincare brands, some of them are going to fail. And unfortunately, it kind of seems like a lot of the ones that are at least currently failing are just cute little small businesses that actually are trying. Have any of you watched the Paris Hilton documentary? It's actually good. I can't believe I'm saying this, but it's, a, it's actually a good documentary, a good insight into uh, kind of what I was just talking about, how negative attention is still attention. But there's something that Paris Hilton was getting at in that documentary that has just absolutely stuck in my brain. And that is the part of that documentary where she was lamenting not being a billionaire with a B. Instead, she's only a multimillionaire and she was just so upset about falling short and not hitting this goal of having a billion dollars. That was the part of that documentary that was really hard for me to watch, knowing people in real life who, you know, are in debt or have, you know, maybe $40 to their name. Meanwhile, there are these very, very ridiculously wealthy people who are sad that they don't have an even more offensive amount of money. I suspect that a lot of us have the same reasoning for why we're not super pumped by celebrity brands. It's sort of like you already have so much money. Why not let somebody else take the spotlight here? All that said, I'm not going to critique Hailey Bieber to the level that I did at Kim Kardashian because I think that something really interesting with looking at road skin is, first of all, it all sold out. It actually sold out. Kim's brand didn't. But she did do some things right. She wanted to make sure that her brand was more affordable, and it is. It's still more expensive than drugstore and Korean options, but it's not the unreasonable price tags of Kim Kardashian's brand. She does have fragrance-free products here. It's a pretty clear uh, way of laying things out in terms of, you know, what are you looking for? It actually very clearly shows that. I do think that kind of like when we were talking about uh, Scarlett Johansson's skincare brand, I actually do think Hailey Bieber or Hailey Bieber's team kind of did do their research. In a quick summary, if I was forced to use either Road Skin or Kim Kardashian's brand, I would go with Hailey Bieber's. I think it looks it looks better. It looks like better products to me. And that's it. I've said what I wanted to say about celebrity skincare brands. Feel free to leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Let's move into drugstore skincare. Oh, we have some exciting stuff here. Let me start out with this Bubble Daydream Tone and Texture Serum. Bubble is such a funny brand to me because when I first heard about the brand, I looked at their products and I thought they all do look nice, but at the same time, I didn't feel like I was ready to take out my credit card and buy everything because it did kind of seem a little bit more of a basic brand. You know, basic is good. If you're talking about a cleanser, a moisturizer, I honestly think basic is the best way to go, but when you have a lot of skincare, as I, you know, I, I might have a lot of skincare, it's also kind of hard to commit to the products. So I think what happened is once Bubble was done with creating that, that basic part of the routine, they started to expand into a little bit more of interesting products. Oh my goodness, this one is absolutely what I would define as an interesting product. I will put the ingredients list up so you can see what I'm talking about. I mean, look at this ingredients list. We have sodium ascorbyl phosphate as the second ingredient, niacinamide, alpha arbutin, tranexamic acid, all of those ceramide ingredients. 
No added fragrance, really no added irritants. This reminds me a lot of some much more expensive sodium ascorbyl phosphate serums. If you're unfamiliar with that ingredient, it's a vitamin C derivative where the research has actually shown that it may be effective for helping out if you also deal with acne. So I've always liked this form of vitamin C, but it's been tricky to find it in you know affordable products and without fragrance. So I'll show you a little more of this product in Friday's video, which will finally be my skincare dupes part two video. Because yes, I am gonna say this is an affordable dupe, except actually done better. And then Good Molecules has released the Discoloration Correcting Body Treatment, which is an amazing idea, a nice compliment to the retinol body treatment that they had already introduced. $15 for four ounces of this product. Again, you know, you get the nothing to hide ingredients list with good molecules. Look at this formula, 4% saccharomyces, 2% cetyltranexamate mesylate, which is a derivative of tranexamic acid, niacinamide at 2%, mm, beautiful level, 1% panthenol. Come here, I'll tell you a secret. Come here, come here. This doesn't have to be just a body product. I've been toying around with the idea of making a video on uh, recession-proof skincare routines. You should keep this trick in mind. If something is pretty low in irritants, if you know you get the full disclosure on the percentage of the ingredients, you might possibly be able to use that product that is made for the body on the face. Now, of course, you know, your mileage may vary, make sure that it's working for you, but to be honest with you, I'm not seeing a reason why this wouldn't work for most people. And then from CeraVe, we have something that is coming soon. I can't yet find this at retailers, but I am really excited for this release. CeraVe is releasing a makeup removing cleansing balm. And while it's not yet available, you actually can see the ingredients list on the CeraVe website. Again, just as you'd expect from CeraVe, it's going to be a fragrance-free product, very low in irritant potential. They have a picture of it, which I'm kind of trying to guess at how it is from this picture. The reason it's so difficult is because any of you that use cleansing balms know they do change when they hit your skin. So it's hard to say if this is going to be the, the firm type, the kind of more, I guess, Vaseline-like that melts once you put it on your skin. But that's what I'm leaning towards in terms of a guess. Because the ones that are a little more melty, like the Elemis Balm, those kind of turn into a bit of an oily substance immediately upon touching your skin. So that's my guess for now. I'm staying tuned. We don't yet know the price on this, but I think it is a very exciting release. It's something that is very in line with CeraVe. Okay, y'all, we are about to continue into the Korean section of this video. I've got to tell you really quickly, I don't know what happened to my voice. I, I don't know. I've been sitting here filming the same video. I think that I might have just gotten too worked up about Kim Kardashian. <laughs> this feels like a real ironic situation to me because we have the right microphone today if you saw my, my upset situation about Monday's video. But now, now that I have the right microphone, my voice is playing jokes on me, I guess. Why is life like this? Why is it like this? Y you have everything lined up to be perfect and it just, it's a rule of life that it never will be, never. We're pressing forward. We've still got a lot to talk about. I hope it's not too disruptive. Anyway, I wanted to start off this section by letting you all know I did indeed get the HR Eucera Deep Shot from Medicube. I am going to also tell you I do not have enough knowledge on the topic of radio frequency, which this is, to talk about it just yet. I'm telling you all of this because I have had people ask, and eventually I will review this and I will come back with more knowledge, but in all truth, every time we talk about skincare devices, it is a lot more information than products. And I talked about this in the intro of my electrotherapy video. What happens with devices is it is a lot more than just, you know, biochemistry. What happens within your skin, it's about so much more than that. It's physics, it's, you know, a, a electrical engineering. So basically stay tuned. My plan is as soon as I finish the Eason Tree trial, 
I'm going to dedicate my time to finishing the video covering long-term thoughts on both LED therapy and also microcurrent. And then I will be able to figure out what's going on with the radio frequency. I will tell you though, if you're wondering why Medicube released the uh, radio frequency device and that uh, Airshot microneedling device at the same time, I think it's because a lot of people do uh, radio frequency and microneedling together. And I think that Medicube was trying to uh, figure out how to make devices to replicate that at home. And like it or not, we have got to talk about what is going on with COSRX? Can we can we just get the sunscreen out of the way? I don't know what they're doing. COSRX, a brand that I have said I absolutely love, is making some very strange choices. So, a, a Korean sunscreen, right? This sounds so exciting. We love so many Korean sunscreens. This is the Vitamin E Vitalizing Sunscreen, SPF 50 plus. Wait a minute, where's the, where's the PA rating? Where? Where's, where's the PA rating? It's a Korean product with no PA rating? What? Yeah, okay, all right, we'll, we'll let that slide. Hopefully it's got, you know, our, our Uvenol and Tenosorb filters in it. Let's see the active ingredients. Avobenzone, homosalate, octocrylene, octosalate. Is this a US chemical sunscreen? What? But if you think about it, this might actually make sense. It might be that COSRX took the US guidelines for sunscreen and made a sunscreen that they'll be able to sell in Ulta. But does that mean it's gonna have the same elegance as the Korean sunscreens that we've come to know and love? I am really skeptical. And also I won't be able to try this because some of those filters I cannot use. So honestly, I feel super disappointed by this. Okay. The broken voice thing, perfect for that. But that's not all, because they've also released a collection, a collection of serums. COSRX, where did you get the time to do all of this this month? The RX COSRX Derm Serums. There are actually three serums here priced between $25 and $30, and they are the Vitamin C23 Serum, the Niacinamide 15 serum and the hyaluronic acid 3 serum. We'll look at them individually. So the vitamin C23 serum is 23% concentrated pure vitamin C serum. My only question there is why 23%? That's not really the level that's studied, but I am familiar with that level because The Ordinary has that exact product. They also added some alcohol into this formula, which I feel like some amount of people are not gonna be too happy with. Kind of just surprising overall. Then their 15% niacinamide serum, I thought 10% was high. 15%, we are so far above the studied amount. The ingredients look pretty basic to me personally. Uh, not, it's not really calling to me. And what's going on with this hyaluronic acid one? So it's 3% hyaluronic acid. That's a pretty high amount of hyaluronic acid. I will say we usually see it at 2% uh, or less, but does that necessarily mean it's gonna give you more? Again, not necessarily. In fact, if you're in a drier climate, that might be you know, contributing to even more of the problem of balancing your humectants with enough water to supply them. Let me know your thoughts. I hate to come for Costar Rex. They make my number one favorite product of all time, but I am just, I, I feel really underwhelmed. And moving into our final section, high-end releases. Again, I'm gonna tell you all, check out that video for four brand new releases. Oh my goodness, we have some incredible products in that video, but we do still have a couple more products to talk about. I also got the Cora Organics Turmeric Glow Foaming Cleanser in PR, and I tried this one before I tried the Dermalogica one from that video. Okay, let's talk about this. I actually do like Cora Organics, even though, you know, they're not a brand for people that are really sensitive to ingredients like essential oils, but oh my goodness, they are incredible at presentation. Look at this cleanser, it is gorgeous. But here's what's perplexing to me about this product. So it's called, again, the Turmeric Glow Foaming Cleanser. The second I pumped this out into my hands, I was so excited, y'all, I mean, come on, look at this gorgeous packaging. The second I pumped this into my hands, massaged it, 
smacked it on my face because I was so excited, right? I got, you know, enthusiastic about it. I was immediately hit with the smell, the smell of peppermint. Why y'all going off about noni and turmeric and aloe and you never mentioned anywhere that this is gonna smell like peppermint? The anger, the rage that I felt, you all know this if you watched my can make video. Ugh, I was so upset. I might have even still tried it if I had known it was the fact that I didn't know that I was about to be forced to smell a smell that I hate. I just feel like if you're going to have so much peppermint in a product that it is overwhelming, I mean, my skin was feeling cold while I was using this. Some people are gonna like that, okay? That's fine. Some people are welcome to enjoy that, but some people will not, and it just should be really clear, shouldn't it? Shouldn't it? Again, really pretty. I feel like some, I feel like it's gonna be a love or hate. I really feel like you're either gonna love this one because it's cooling, it's beautiful, it's a nice texture, very cosmetically elegant, or you're gonna hate it for the exact same reason I did, which is that overwhelming peppermint. And I thought I would also throw into this video the new Tahitian Vanilla Kopari collection. So I would say, we'll go through this quickly because I think overall this is more of scented body care. This is really more of, uh, you're gonna fall in love if you really like just a good scent all over your body. This body butter, if you've tried the original or if you just got it in the Trin Mood box, this one is so much stronger. It's, it's shocking. I thought that was strong. This is stronger. And in some ways I prefer it because this is such a concentrated product that you really only need to kind of dip your finger in. See how bouncy it is? Can you see that on camera? That amount is, I kid you not, enough for your hands. It's enough for your hands. This is a product where a little goes such an absurdly long way. It's actually all the way up to my elbows. And the scent fills the room like, like a, a, a vanilla candle. It actually, <laughs> not to detract from Kopari's kind of more high-end slant, but it, it does smell like a Bath and Body Works scent to me. I can't remember the name of it, but that, that vanilla one but I would say it is incredibly moisturizing for your body. Oh my goodness, it's beautiful. And then from Sugar Bear Hair, and don't worry, this is not gonna be a, uh, a glowing assessment. The Lash Care Vegan Vitamin Infused Lash Serum for $99.99. Y'all, look at these ingredients. L look at these ingredients. This looks so close to the new The Ordinary Lash Serum that is, you know, a fifth of the price. Actually, less than a fifth of the price. This is why I personally do not like the Sugar Bear Hair brand at all. I feel like what they do, and again, this is just my opinion, but I feel like they create these products that are the same as other options on the market. They just use a whole lot of influencer marketing and jack the prices way, way up. And we started this video with drama. Why don't we go ahead and end it with some drama as well. Let's talk about the new Pharmacy 1% Vitamin A Retinol Serum. In case you're new to this channel, I feel like I need to really quickly run you through my experience with Pharmacy. I actually tried them about four and a half years ago. I really liked the brand. I fell in love with Honey Halo. Some of you have been on this channel long enough to remember when Honey Halo was basically my favorite moisturizer. I don't know if it's just me, but it feels like the pharmacy of just a couple years ago is a completely different brand from what they are now. When I first saw this announced, I was so incredibly excited. 1% retinol is pretty much the maximum amount that you will buy over the counter in the US. That's a very strong retinol product. It just seemed exciting. You know, another option, $60 for an ounce. That's actually a pretty good price compared to some of the other 1% retinol serums. But then pharmacy started to promote this on their Instagram. And what they were saying is that this was a retinol and retinaldehyde product. At which point a lot of people who saw that post started going, wait, 1% retinol, okay. But then how much retinaldehyde is in the product? So how much of these retinol and retinaldehyde ingredients are in your product? And that's when pharmacy started playing the, oh, that's proprietary information card. 
which I don't have a problem with that in all cases. If you're not going to claim a percentage as the name of your product, I don't have a problem with that. Doesn't mean I'll buy a product, but I don't have a problem with that. This is where it starts getting really tricky. How are you saying it's 1% and yet you're also saying you're not going to disclose the percentage? What, you can't have both of these things. And I also felt so amazed reading through the comments. People were asking questions like, is this gentle? To which Pharmacy was saying, hold on, I, I gotta quote them on this. This is an amazing quote. Of course, other retinals have been known to cause mild irritation when first introduced to the skin, but our retinal has less potential for irritation due to being fermentation derived. What? It's still retinaldehyde. But what I wanted to make sure to explain is a question that I kept getting in my own inbox, which was people saying, how is this legal? How can they say that they're not disclosing percentages and yet it's the name of the product? So to understand this, let's talk about a phrase that you've probably heard someone say, and that is, our cosmetics industry isn't regulated. That's a little bit of an overstatement. Our cosmetics industry is regulated, but it's under-regulated. Some examples of regulated cosmetics we actually already talked about in this video when we talked about the COSRX sunscreen. Sunscreens are highly controlled in the United States. You have to list the percentages. You can only use a small handful of filters in your products. There is extensive testing to be done anytime you're going to release a sunscreen product. Another example, anytime we're talking about acne care products, you have to disclose the percentage on the label. That's because in the US, anything that is considered a drug is highly regulated. And that, by the way, is the same reason why if you buy Differin from your local CVS, you will notice that there is an active ingredients panel that tells you exactly how much adapalene is in your product. But both retinol and retinal or retinaldehyde are not considered to be drug ingredients. If you hate this and you want this to change and you wanna push for more regulation within cosmetics, I totally understand that. But keep in mind that that would absolutely come with more of those regulations, including what can and what can't be used in this country. And it's a country where things often move pretty slow, as you may have noticed from our very outdated sunscreen filters. So it's it's really a, a it's a catch-22. When you have high regulation, that also means that you might not have what you want. I mean, I think most of us want those new chemical filters, but because of that regulation, we still don't have it. And yet we probably also want companies to not be able to get away with this, but if we start pushing for that, then retinol and retinal could be more regulated. Isn't it tricky? These are the kind of things that are, are really tricky conversations to have within the skincare world. But basically, TLDR, I'm not loving it. I'm not loving it, I'm disappointed. And that brings us to the end of what's new in skincare for June of 2022. Let me know your thoughts as always in the comment section below. Let me know what you are trying or have tried for this month. Make sure to like and subscribe if you did enjoy today's video. Have a wonderful rest of your week and I will see you all next time.